And we talked about praying. We talked about having a prayer life. We talked about having one all together. If you don't have a prayer life, then getting a prayer life. We talked about how the Bible said that we should pray without ceasing. We talked about how Jesus taught his disciples how to pray at all times and never to give up. Amen. We talked about how important prayer was and how that we have to go and be like Jesus Christ. We have to find that garden of the second in our own house. Amen. That's a little further from the TV and a little further from what you can hear people talking about. Amen. And we have to establish where those gardens are in our own house so that we can go there and pray. When, it, when we need to pray, amen? How many people did their homework on Wednesday night? How many people went home and found that sacred place that they could lay before the Lord, amen? If you did your homework, let me, oh, amen, amen. For those of you that missed that class, amen, it's important that all of us go home, amen, and find a garden of the set me in our house so that we may pray when the time comes because it is going to come a time if you're not praying that you're going to have to pray. And there should be a place in your house. And if Jesus had to have a place, then he had to go and lay it all out on the line and pray, then what about us? Amen. So we need to prepare that sacred place and we need to have it ready. Amen. Amen. So hopefully once we get it prepared, amen, we'll start using it on a regular basis. Hallelujah, somebody. What we was talking about on Wednesday is going before the Lord with what we call a desire. In Psalms 34, 37, and 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Amen. And when we go before the Lord, we go before the Lord with desires in our hearts. Now, prayers are all about desires. How many people know that? That's why I say if you seek first the kingdom of God, amen, that all of these desires that you have in your heart, these things will be added unto you, amen. So a prayer is just more than just a calling out words or just a wish for thinking thing, but a prayer is a desire. And we talk intensively and extensively Wednesday about having a desire and taking that desire to the Lord. Somebody said a desire. But today I want to add something to that, amen? Uh, when I was a little boy, I uh, had a singer named uh, Rick James and uh, 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 Tina Maria. And they were onto something because they talked about a fire and a desire, amen? And my word today is to you that you got to have fire and desire. In other words, we're going to go beyond just praying, but we're going to pray with the fire, amen? We're gonna have more than just a desire, but we're gonna have what? We're gonna have fire, somebody say fire, fire. and desire. In Matthew 3 and 11, it says, I baptize you with water for repentance, John said, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Somebody say, I want that fire. With the Holy Spirit and fire, which means that we have to get to a point in our life where we got more than just a prayer, more than just a desire, but we got the fire and the desire. And when we got the fire along with the desire, our prayers become totally different. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. It becomes totally different. See, it didn't make sense to some of us to say, pray without ceasing. Talking about an honest prayer. Because without the fire, how can you pray without ceasing? Without having, without having a true fire down on the inside of you, how do you know to continue to pray? pray? How do you know when to stop praying? How do you know when to start back praying? How do you know how long to pray? It has to be a what? It has to be a fire. Come on, somebody. With the desire. Now, are you see that? Oh, you're going to get there in a minute. In Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Somebody say that five. And he searches our heart. Huh? 
He who searches our hearts knows the mind of what? Of the spirit. Because the spirit does what? It intercedes for God's people in accordance with what? The will of God. In other words, we got to have a fire along with the desire. I got to break the thing down for a minute and then I'm done. In other words, a desire is somebody in this place praying for a husband. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a desire, baby. And sometimes you get down on whatever pattern you done made, that's old school. Yeah, y'all don't know about that. <laughs> sometimes I tell my age, you know. But when you make a kid a pattern, he's going to see for a long time. But anyway, it goes beyond making a pattern to pray on. When you have the fire along with the desire. Yeah. Because a person is lay there with the desire for hours to pray for a husband. But when you get the fire along with the desire, you quit praying for the husband and start praying for you to change and be good enough or different enough for you to have a husband. Somebody say, now that's the fire part. See, without the fire, you just praying for something that you desire without realizing that there's some things in you that need to change in order to get what you really want. That's why it says that when the fire is down on the inside of you, you may not have to pray for the husband, but you wind up praying for yourself. Because the reality of it is, baby, the way you are right now, even if God bless you with a husband, you wouldn't keep him long. See, we got to understand that the desire will make us lay down and want a better relationship. Yeah, yeah. We want to make things better. And the desire will begin to pray that things be better. But the fire will come in and start praying that you become a better person. The fire will come in and start pointing out things about you. Amen, somebody. That will help the relationship. A lot of people don't want the fire now. That's why I said sometimes you get to a point where you just have to shut up and, and start groaning and moaning because what's being prayed for ain't necessarily what you had in mind. Yeah. <laughs> because you know you wanted to pray for something else, but the Holy Spirit said, no, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. There's some things that got to be different about you. Yeah. Huh? I'm just going to go pray for them because they'll miss. Hold up now, that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. So they might be a mess, but let me tell you who else a mess. Amen. And before you go and pray for that speck in their eye, won't you just spend a little time on the law that's in yours? Somebody said, that's that fire. See, sometimes we want to sit down and we want to pray about families. We want to pray about our raises. We want to pray about God blessing us financially. We want to pray about, about, about God you know, giving us an increase in our life. But the fire part will make us start praying about God, help us to become what you call a good steward. Help us be able to be someone that can have something, call somebody, and don't mind blessing somebody else. Because the word teaches me that God blesses those who blesses others. And some people just want to be blessed and don't want to bless nobody. But that fire will begin to work on you and say, you know you stand just, you know when it comes up to you giving, you the last one to want to give. Oh, that don't feel too good. Come on, somebody. some truth in this thing. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. God ain't trying to bless nobody right now with no big new house. Lord. Lord. For you to pardon me. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. God ain't trying to give you more bedrooms and front of yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You see it in the one bedroom you got. Yeah. And you want to bless you with folks. What you want to do? Have one favor of another night? come in and start praying for you because you're praying for a home but you need to be praying about how you live holy in the home. I better move on. It's you saying. <laughs> listen, listen. There ain't none of us got no problem. 
Amen, Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, when we accepted Jesus Christ, it tells us that when we accepted Jesus Christ automatically, we accepted what we call the promise. <laughs> with the acceptance of Jesus Christ comes along with the promise. He that he left behind to, to be with us. Somebody said the Holy Spirit. Holy Somebody Spirit. called it the fire. the fire. And we don't have a problem with the fire. Matter of fact, when the people uh, uh, were at, 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 in the Pentecostal situation, it says that, that the Holy Spirit came and descended on, on each one of them. And on each one of them, over their shoulder was like a cloven tongue of fire. Y'all know what that said? That reminded me of, that reminded me of a pattern like Anybody ever seen a pilot light? A pilot light is a little fire that looks like something on top of a candle. You usually see a pilot light in a hot water heater, or you see a pilot light in an oven, or you see a pilot light in a gas fireplace. Come on, somebody. And you got this little light that's burning on the inside of you, but it's just cool. Amen, it's cool. And it don't do anything unless something is applied to it. Now, if something applies to it, then you're going to get a poof. And if it's a big something like you, a poof. And I remember my wife came over one time in our young time, and she was going to cook dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a gas stove, an old school gas stove, that no, one of them stoves that you really want to cook biscuits in. <laughs> and my wife was wanting to cook some cornbread, and everybody know that when you're going to light an old school stove, See, bone already shaking my head. <laughs> when you go like an old school stove, you got to like the old school stove from the bottom. <laughs> because that's where the pilot light is. But my wife, that day, she opened and wanted to light the stove from the top. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> and that gas was going, and it was going to the point where you could smell it. Somebody said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That's somebody old oh, school. No, somebody said, oh, Lord. That's like, oh. <laughs> and she stuck that fire in there, and it went boom! <laughs> All to her face. Oh, Burned the eyelashes. <laughs> and her eyebrows. Somebody give God some praise, God. in 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. It says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that comes on you to test you. As though something strange has happened to you. Why we, why we be tripping like when things, cross, when things go wrong with us, why we at such an awful? Why we so out of our mind because everything that broke loose in our life? See, every now and then you got to add some gas to your power line. In other words, this fire that I'm talking about, it don't just come. Some got to make it come. Some has to happen, amen, to make this thing ignite in us and get bigger in us. And a lot of times, the ignition of this pattern like this in us are trials and tribulations. Baby, have you ever laid down and prayed when a trial and a tribulation is going on? Oh, it ain't nothing cute about it no more. You don't care who can overhear you. You don't care what you're praying on top of it. You've been laying there for 30 minutes on top of one of your high heel shoes. But you give it all you got. Amen. You don't care about the soul that you're feeling inside. You just give it all you got. Amen. It's fire in that prayer. Why? Because there's a trial there. And then it's time for the church. Somebody say the church. To have a fire along with these desires that we have. And although we have experienced some trials and some persecutions and some wrongdoings and things like that, God is saying, man, you need to shake back. You need to not act like you're so shocked that something went wrong in your life. But you need to understand that these trials have come to ignite something that's already down. Somebody said, my pilot like them lit up. Your trials have come to light up your pilot light, baby. Your trials have come to put something down on the inside of you on fire that it hadn't been in a while. Come on, somebody. Because sometimes joy and happiness don't make your, don't make your pilot light pop up. Amen? It requires some pressure. It requires some trials. It requires some tribulations. Amen? For that fire to happen in your life. In other words, every now and then you get a box fire at home. 
Every now and then you get a grease fire in your house. But you know, you can have a grease fire in your house and somebody can be standing outside talking and don't even know that it's in there. Somebody can light a box, a whole box in your house. And that box will burn in your house and nobody will know on the outside that there's a fire in your house. But when the house gets engulfed, does anybody know what I'm talking about? When the curtains begin to light up, when the sheetrock begin to light up, when the furniture begin to light up, when the insulation on the inside of your house has light up, then you got people on the outside of the house know that something is burning on the inside of the house. And it's time for the people to know that there's something on the inside of this house that's starting to burn.